Hey guys, it's Gabby. Um, I'm not really sure. I just kind of made this vlog on the fly because I wanted to really just get this stuff out there because I feel like if I'm going to think about it like two years later, I'm going to forget about all of this. So I was just going to talk about how I got into DBZ. I know that sounds like not a very interesting story and in all honesty, it probably isn't. But I think I'm still trying to get wraps over it myself. I mean, I... And well, now I'm a grown woman and I am actually really enjoying Dragon Ball Z. You know, that anime where the superpowered aliens beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> it's kind of crazy if you think about it. And I'm still at the point where I'm not exactly sure why I like it. I There, I, there are reasons, I have predictions and I have sort of semi-ideas, but there's no specific reason as to why I'm really into it. Like, I'm really into it. If you... No, I'll just move it this way. If you look behind me, like uh, about sort of uh, trying to like there, those that's my collection of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball manga. It's getting bigger. It's gonna get bigger. I still haven't finished my full colors. The full colors are really cool. If you guys are ever gonna buy the manga, and wow, there is a fly in my room. I don't know how it got there. Right. Anyway, so my Dragon Ball phase it didn't really start. It's first it was an anime phase, and the anime phase started as a magical girl phase. See, it was about uh, 2013, and I was just thinking a lot about, or maybe sort of the uh, end of 2012, beginning of 2013. And I was thinking a lot about Sailor Moon. I used to watch Sailor Moon a lot when I was little. So I was just thinking, and I was sort of like looking it up on like Google or whatever. And through that, I found out that Magical Girls is apparently like a genre in Japan. And I'm like, holy crap, that's so cool. So they were like, magical girl shows, like more th ones that aren't Sailor Moon, like there's a whole bunch. And I'm like, that's really cool because I used to love magical girl shows. And I always wished that there was like a proper one that I could watch like all the time when I was younger that wasn't Sailor Moon. Because well, after a few years, I was like, okay, I can't tell anyone I like Sailor Moon. It was like my guilty pleasure because I thought it was like for little girls and not for like, you know, your older girls or teenagers. So around that time, I went on the sort of magical girl phase. I found out a whole bunch of magical girl shows. I was watching them, including things like Madoka Magica, which are <laughs> the dark magical girl stories. But yeah, I also, so what happens is I found out again about this show called Pretty Cure. What Pretty Cure is, it's basically what happens if you take sort of Sailor Moon, but then you add like even more Power Rangers into it. Like, I mean, yearly franchising and sort of character archetypes and continuity like different reboots every year in different teams and it keeps going for, and it doesn't stop and yet yeah, you always have a different episode and a different season and I'm like okay that's really cool and so I kind of started getting into Pretty Cure. Now Pretty Cure is basically made for very young girls in Japan so it's not very complex, and it's also kind of stupid, and it's also kind of cheaply made sometimes. But I did like it, even if it was a 22-minute toy commercial, because, I mean, heck, there were new magical girl shows. I'm like, that's so cool. I really, and I really liked, enjoyed Pretty Cure, even if it wasn't very complex at all. And so that kind of kicked off my anime phase. I'm not exactly sure what happened after that, but then I think... It was like the more I learned about Pretty Cure and the more I was watching different things then the more I sort of found out about Japanese culture and the more I sort of started getting into different anime. And then I, when you watch the inter go around the internet for a while, you hear about something called a bridge series. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. First of all, I've, so yeah, when you go around the internet for a while, you can't not hear about, oh, there's these abridged series, and they're like really cool. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I like anime now. I like watching different things. So why don't I just start watching these abridged series? Maybe they'll be entertaining. I think the first one I did watch was Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, I don't remember much about Yu-Gi-Oh!, but I knew a little bit, considering it was such a big deal at the time. So, like, I knew, like, some of the character names, and I was just like, oh, okay, it's, it's funny, like, it's very entertaining and stuff. And I'm not exactly sure how, but through that, I think it was through, you know, the abridged series, there was always this re these references to these guys called Team Four Star. And I'm like, okay, I wonder who they are. 
And I think after a while, like it was still sort of a few weeks later, like it, it was after I'd already watched like Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged series. And so I heard about these Team 4 Star guys. And then I found out they did Dragon Ball Z The Abridged series. And I'm not exactly sure what made me start watching it. Perhaps I found their YouTube channel and then I must have just, maybe I was just surprised by like how many views and how many subscribers they had. So I'm like, okay, these guys seem very popular. And you know what? I mean, Dragon Ball Z was that thing that like everyone got into, but I never watched it. <laughs> Honestly, I think that was the thing I probably should have said at the beginning. I never watched Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid. You know, well, okay, for two reasons. One, I don't remember it actually like screening. My cartoon habits were basically just before school and after school. I never watched Saturday morning cartoons and I have no idea. I didn't have cable either so I didn't know if or when Dragon Ball Z would ever be airing. So I probably didn't watch any episodes of Dragon Ball Z live but even if I did I don't think I would have watched it simply because it was just coded that Dragon Ball Z was a boys show. No girls allowed. Girls couldn't even like it. It just wasn't right. That was the thing the boys talked about. The girls, well, I don't even know. I wasn't even Sailor Moon because by that age, I was still guilty of conf telling people that I liked Sailor Moon. So yeah, basically, I didn't watch Dragon Ball Z as a kid. I didn't, barely knew anything. Pretty much what I knew about is there was a guy called Goku. There was a guy called Goku. There was a guy called Vegeta. They were Super Saiyans. Yeah, they were Saiyans and they were Super Saiyans. And Super Saiyan is that thing where their hair turns blonde. <laughs> so that was pretty much all of my- oh, there's also a guy called Piccolo, and there was a villain called Cell. That's pretty much all I knew, I think. And so, yeah, that- I was just like, you know, Dragon Ball Z is such an influential part of other people's childhoods, but I barely knew anything about it. And considering that Team Four Star, like one of the most popular bridge series, Dragon Ball Z is one of the most popular anime, you know, I mean, it was going to happen eventually that I was going to watch it. And I watched Team Four Stars Dragon Ball Z Abridged. And I really liked it. I mean, the okay, to be fair, the first few episodes, I was a bit sort of iffy on it. But considering how slow Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged series started, I was willing to give it a chance and to hope that it got better. And it got better. It got really good. And I was just surprised that... The further it got in, especially once season 2 started and they started going to Namek, I was just surprised not only by how much I was enjoying the, the bridge series, but how much I was just enjoying the series in general. How much I liked the characters, and how much I liked everything. And then it made me think, wow, you know, maybe Dragon Ball Z isn't as stupid as I thought it was. There's like actual plot and stuff. And so that kind of got me into sort of investigating. I was looking up Dragon Ball Z looking up things, just, yeah, just finding out what happened later, finding out what happened at the same time, just, you know, finding out random plot points, looking up the wiki. I didn't know that much about it, but I was just, you know, I was curious. I, Team Four Star successfully piqued my curiosity, and I wanted to see what was going to happen. And then, I think, honestly, at that point, I was in a sort of love-hate relationship. Remember, I was being, I had just been used to watching magical girl shows. In magical girl shows, a character gets stronger once they undergo character development. You know, they learn something about themselves, get self-confidence, just just in general, learn that to never give up, that kind of thing. So Dragon Ball Z really was really jarring for me because characters got stronger by training. Which, while it's realistic, for me it seems so strange in a narrative purpose. Because, like, do you really need why would you get so invested that Goku became stronger? if the only reason he got stronger was because he was training in the afterlife. So I was just, I was having a love-hate relationship and I think things were going to stay that way. And then I found out about how the Cell Saga ended. You know, I, I'm just going to be completely honest here. I think Gohan versus Cell, I think that was the thing that made me start liking it. Because, I mean, throughout Dragon Ball Z, the abridged series, I'm like, oh, I like Gohan, he's so cute, and he's just like, like, he can, you know, he gets the sympathy at the beginning because he's got all this horrible training with Piccolo, and, you know, that clearly happens even in the original. So I'm like, oh, you know, he's cute, I think he's probably one of my favorite characters, because, I mean, I didn't like any of the females in Dragon Ball because the, 
trick and trail of the female characters, I'm like, oh, so none of them actually fight. Well, that's a shame. And then I found out that Gohan beats the main villain in the Cell Saga. And I'm like, holy shit, what is going on? I thought this was the show where Goku beats everyone and everyone else is kind of useless. So I don't exactly know when or how, but I ended up like looking at the Gohan versus Cell fight. I think I watched a bit of it in the anime and then I sort of like illegally read the manga per version of it. And I just need to say, I think it, it got to me. It affected me in a way that not many other shows have for a very long time. It, it broke through my cynical shell of just, yeah, just cynicism. And it made me actually feel for it. Just, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was just, yeah, because I liked Gohan and the fact that he got to step up. But I think mainly, or maybe it was just the fact that, like, the final, the final beam struggle. And then, you know, Cell's giving him it all, then Gohan's doing it, and he's like, oh, I can't win, and Cell's gonna beat me, and he's gonna, like, blow up the planet, and then Goku's, like, telepathically going in his head, and he's like, no, Gohan, you gotta believe in yourself, and blah, 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 and you're just doubting, yeah, and I, I remember one point, and then Gohan's like, oh, I'm sorry, Dad, this is all my fault, and you're dead, and blah, 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 and he's like, no, and then, yeah, Goku's like, no, I don't, I don't know where you got in your head that you're worthless, but you're not, and I think that line really made me, it really got to me, and I'm like, oh, I can really relate to that. I think everyone can relate to that, to be honest. But I think that was the point where I started thinking, I'm like, wow, you know, I think I might like this Dragon Ball Z a bit more than I thought I would. Like, no, honestly, when I saw that, especially, especially when I saw the Japanese version of it, and I saw the music and the, oh, Gohan going Super Saiyan 2 in Japanese, it's so good. And that day, that night, I had I had a family dinner, and I was people. Yeah, if if, if any of my family was watching this, is you might notice that night I was going on being like how I was feeling really weird, and I didn't know why. And I think it was just still the aftermath of that scene was still with me, like just that that night, like just for hours, kind of like sort of sort of there. I'm like, holy crap! I know how weird is that, right? Maybe I was just overthinking it. Maybe it was just something that I really needed at that time. And it just came in the right place. And it was just, think, you know, this whole optimism and the never give up attitude and the fact that if you try, you have that power within you. And if you release it, you know, you could be strongest in the universe <laughs> if you want to. You can save the world. It was just really great. And I think that's what got me into it. And then the more I, so then the more I did that, I did more research. And then I think the more research I did, the more I found out about it, the more informed I got, the more I ended up liking it. And really, I think that's how I got into Dragon Ball Z. It's, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, so at, at the beginning, I didn't think I was going to like it. And I almost didn't want to like it. Because I thought that's a boy show. Boys should like boy shows. Girls should like girl shows. I should like magical girls. I shouldn't like Dragon Ball Z or Shonen anime. I mean, it's some crappy show and it's got like the one where you spend like 20 minutes doing something. And I think the other reason why I ended up liking Dragon Ball Z more was because the more I found out about it, the more I realized that a lot of the problems that people, um, a lot of the problems that people criticize Dragon Ball Z for, like, you know, battles taking forever. A lot of that was sort of just the fault of the fault of um, turning a serialized manga into an anime and having to put in filler all the time. And when I realized that it, they weren't intending for it to be that long and that crazy, and when I found out about Kai, and when I found out about just how they try to fix things and how they had the movies, so I'm like, wow, you know, some of these criticisms aren't really relevant. Maybe Dragon Ball Z is better than I thought it was. And then I, yeah, so I started watching more Team 4 Star episodes, started watching like proper actual episodes of it. And anyway, I actually have a timeline of this. So the first, the last, um, the first episode of Team 4 Star that I watched before, like I actually watched and when it came out was episode 39, which according to this came out January 16th. And I think that the day where I 
like sometimes after where I watched Gohan vs. Cell and I like really liked it, that was in May 30th. Yeah. Yeah, the episode was, yeah, ep ep the episode was January 16th, 2014, and then this was May 30th, 2014. So that was a pretty long time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how I got into Dragon Ball Z. And now I'm obsessed. Well, I mean, everyone's obsessed with something, right? I'm just obsessed with the crappy anime. It's not that bad. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I had to talk about. I think that's my almost my entire experience. Now I am liking Dragon Ball Z. I've found a lot about the Japanese version. I've found a lot about everything. And I'm pretty much a walking encyclopedia, maybe. Like, I know a lot of info now, and it's been kind of memorized into my brain, you know, as opposed to important things, like my tax number or whatever. <laughs> Right, so yeah, that was pretty much it. So, bye guys.